Welcome back to the second part of your podcast lesson for today. You should have just finished the notes unit 1.6 on Enlightenment philosopher John Locke. We're now going to jump into the notes unit 1.7 on Enlightenment philosopher Montesquieu. A reminder that by the end of today's entire podcast lessons, students will be able to recall Locke's and Montesquieu's Enlightenment ideas and argue if those ideas have created any change in the world that continues today by completing an exit ticket with 80% accuracy. We're going to jump straight into marginalia notes for Charles Louis Montesquieu, so please make sure that you're actively filling in your blanks. We're going to refer to Charles Louis Montesquieu just as Montesquieu for short, and we're going to see that Montesquieu was a French Enlightenment philosopher. So he's one of these thinkers during the Enlightenment time period who's coming up with many different democratic ideas that give people different freedoms, different powers, and different rights. Now, some of Montesquieu's ideas were his own, meaning that he came up with them first, but many of his ideas were actually borrowed, and one of the many places he borrowed some of his ideas from were for ancient Rome. And so Charles Louis Montesquieu is a French Enlightenment philosopher who was heavily influenced by the Romans' ideas, and specifically one idea was the separation of powers. Now, if you don't remember, the separation of powers is an idea that the government should be divided into branches or groups. And like the Romans, he believed that governments, whether one person or one group of people, that governments will try to abuse their power just due to the fact that humans are naturally greedy. This is something that we know is true. Time and time again, history has shown it showed the Greeks, it showed the Romans, it showed Montesquieu. History has shown that People will abuse power. And this is one of the big reasons why the word tyrant has changed meaning. If you remember back to the Unit 1.2 notes on the ancient Greeks and their influences on democracy, one of the things that we learned was that the word tyrant originally during the ancient Greek times used to just mean leader. Didn't mean good leader, didn't mean bad leader, it just meant leader. But after many, many incidences, many, many historical accounts of tyrants abusing power, the word tyrant was changed to mean an abusive bad leader, a dictator, and this is the same definition that the word tyrant has today, an abusive dictator-like leader. Now, although Charles Montesquieu borrowed the idea of separation of powers from the Romans, Montesquieu made a change. Unlike the Romans who divided the government into just two branches, which we can see here, they gave the legislative and executive branch. Unlike this two-branch division, Montesquieu believed that the government should be divided into three branches, and so he added a third branch which was the judicial branch, something that the Romans were missing. Montesquieu's idea on the three branches is used today in some countries, and some of these countries would be what we call the Western nations, the developed nations. An example of a Western developed nation would be the United States, along with many different nations in Europe like France, Great Britain, Italy, and along with another nation in North America, Canada. So these many different Western advanced nations today have been influenced by Montesquieu's changes on separation of powers, and so they use Montesquieu's version today. Here is a quick little breakdown of the three different branches and what they do. The legislative branch makes the laws and is made up of the senator's representatives. The executive branch enforces the laws and is made up of the president, vice president, and advisors. And the judicial branch reviews and interprets the laws and it is headed by the Supreme Court system. All three of these branches are a result of Montesquieu's idea of separation of powers and the fact that he modified this idea which was originally created by the Romans. I'd like you to go ahead and circle this section of your notes and write yourself a little kind of like tag around here indicating that Montesquieu's separation of powers idea is something that has influenced Western political thought. It's something that we use today in advanced nations in order to increase democracy. We're going to go ahead and pause the podcast here. I'd like you to read questions one, two, three, and four for video number three. 
Once you've read the questions one, two, three, and four, you can find the video link for video three within the description section of this podcast. You're going to copy and paste that link into your web browser. You're going to watch the video and then answer questions one through four to check your understanding for the U.S. branches of government today. All right, now that you've gone ahead and watched the video, let's check your answers. If you're missing answers or if some answers are incorrect, now is the time to pause the podcast so that you can either add this information to your notes and or make corrections. Let's go ahead and jump into the last section of our marginalia notes for Montesquieu. We're going to jump into the section titled Checks and Balances, which we're going to find is another influence, another democratic idea created by Montesquieu, which is used today in Western political thought. Western meaning advanced nations, political meaning government. So we can see the checks and balance system is used today in the way that advanced nations think about government. The idea of separation of powers allows for something called checks and balances. And checks and balances, in case you don't remember, from the American Democracy Notes Unit 1.1, checks and balances is an organization that allows for the branches to control the other branches so that no one branch can become too powerful. So we can see here a nice little representative of America's democracy, three different branches with each branch having its own unique power, but even though each branch has its own power, the branches can come together to check the power of another in case one of the branches becomes a dictator. I'll give you a perfect example. The separation of power system can be nicely seen if we take a look at ACPA's administrative system. ACPA has a principal, Dr. De Villiers, an assistant principal, Mrs. Death, and a second assistant principal, Mr. Kwan. Now, although some people would believe that Dr. De Villiers has total control of the school, just like some people believe that President Trump has total control of the executive branch, this is not true. Both President Trump and both Dr. De Villiers actually have a system of check on their power. The legislative branch and the judicial branch can check the power of the president if he is acting like a dictator just like Mr. Kwan and Mrs. Ham can check the power of Dr. De Villiers. So for example, if Dr. De Villiers, who has total control over expelling students, if he starts to abuse this power of expulsion, Mrs. Death and Mr. Kwan could step in and stop him by checking his power, by pointing out that he's being a dictator when it comes to expelling students. Now, Mrs. Depp, who has the power to suspend students out of school, if she starts to act like a dictator and abuse this suspension power, Dr. De Villiers and Mr. Kwan could step in and check her in order to stop her from abusing her power of out-of-school suspensions. If Mr. Kwan, who has the power to in-school suspend students, if he starts to abuse this power, Dr. De Villiers and Mrs. Death could step in and check his power to stop him from becoming a dictator. So each three of these administrators has a specific power. Mrs. Death does out-of-school suspensions, Mr. Kwan does in-school suspensions, and Dr. De Villiers does expulsions. Now even though they each have their own power, they technically, technically need to be equally wanting, running the country together and they are not allowed to abuse their power. If they abuse their power, the other two administrators can step in and check that abuse. This is the same for the American government system and for any government that actually uses separation of powers. Separation of powers allows for a checks and balance system in which in the three different government branches can check each other in case one of them is becoming a dictator. Let's go ahead and take a look at video number four. For video number four, we have question number five. Go ahead and pause the podcast, read question five, find the video link for video four, copy and paste it into the web browser, watch the video, and then answer question number five. Now for question number five, you've just watched video four. For question number five, there were lots of different answers that you could have given for two ways that the branches check each other. The two answers I've given here are just two examples of many answers that you could have written down. 
If you don't have the specific answers I wrote down, that's okay as long as you have something jotted down. If you don't have anything jotted down or you'd like to add my information, please go ahead and pause the podcast to do this now. All right, so before we end the podcast on Montesquieu, we're going to go ahead and work on video number five. For video number five, there is one question, which is question six. Before you go ahead and jump into question six, I want to give you some background information. Video number five deals with a question, what was Saddam able to do since separation of powers was not used in Iraq? Iraq is a country located in what's known as the Middle East. And in the Middle East, it's been very common for leaders to be dictators. If we zoom out of the Middle East, we can see that the Middle East is located here in this region. In the previous lecture, Unit 1.6 on Locke, we learned about the Arab Spring, which took place here in North Africa and in the Middle East, where many different Arab and North African countries decided to launch massive revolutions against their dictators. Now, before the Arab Spring took place in the early 2000s, there was a leader by the name of Saddam Hussein who was running Iraq. And in Iraq, Saddam Hussein had absolute power, meaning that he had total and full control of Iraq. Nobody challenged him. Nobody challenged him because separation of powers did not exist in Iraq. There was no division of the power. It was just one man being the sole leader who had all of the power. Go ahead and pause the podcast, find the link for video five, use the video to answer question six. All right, so let's review your answer for question number six. Go ahead and pause the podcast to read my answer and make any changes or additions that might be necessary to your answer. All right, now that we've gone ahead and gone through all of the videos and completed all of the marginalia notes, let's go ahead and complete the Cubs reading for the unit 1.7 notes. Here's a reminder of our objective and here's some directions to remind us that we should be cubbing the source that we're gonna be reading down here. This is a source created by Montesquieu himself on his ideas of separation of powers and on his idea of checks and balances. In case you've forgotten how to complete a Cubs reading, remember that you're going to be circling unknown words and defining them, underlining main ideas in each paragraph or in the reading, summarizing what you learned from the reading at the bottom by providing a summary in the lines, and then finally boxing the evidence for your summary. Here are some definitions for some terms I thought that you might need help defining. If you don't need to define all or some of these words, that's fine. You can go ahead and define the ones that you do need. Here is a list of expectations for the activity. This activity should take you no more than 12 minutes to go ahead and Cubs read the source. We should be at a level zero while we independently read, raising our hand for the teacher, and then getting a stamp for completing the Cubs analysis along with all of the Unit 1.7 podcast activities. Once you're done, you can go ahead and pause this podcast to go ahead and jump into your Cubs analysis.